Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And for those who are tuning in online, we're so delighted that you can join us uh, this morning. Please rise if you're able, and let us prepare our hearts as we worship the risen King. Hallelujah. Our God is alive.
Please rise if you are able and let us continue to worship.
the mercy of God can do. And if you knew me then, you believe me now, and turn my whole life upside down. You took the old and he made it new. It's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story of how I've overcome. This is goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. But the goodness and mercy and the power of His blood.
before we pray. The whole world is rejoicing today. And the world says, Happy Easter. But the right term should be, in biblical terms, should be Happy Resurrection Day because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I went around and asked people how they say it from the land they came from. And um, Juliana, you're originally from Taiwan, she says it's Fu Ho Che Hai Lo. And then, of course, the Spanish speaking people, they say Felices Pascuas. In, um, in Israel today, they will say, Kag Pascua Samiak. And then in, in the Tagalog from Philippines, it would be, Hamligayang Pasko ng Pagkabuhay. In, in my dialect, name Bag of Penagungar. And so, we rejoice today. A moment as important as Christmas Day. It is today. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. For today, we celebrate again one of the greatest miracles in history. And we thank you, Lord, for this day is a reminder for us to rejoice because Jesus is risen. Victory is ours. Lord, we pray for each family here. We pray for those who need the Savior. We pray for those who are sick, that they may be healed. We pray for those who are lonely, that they may rejoice. We pray for those who need hope, that they may find hope only in God. We pray for those who are lonely. We pray for those who are not with their families, that they may also find friends who can rejoice with them. Lord, today encourage us and remind us during the service so that we will rejoice together in this church. And everywhere we go, we pray for our families, our friends, and our neighbors. We pray for our nation, oh God. We pray for the Christian nations. We pray for Israel. We pray for all the countries, Lord, who are being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for a great revival before the rapture. We thank you for being with us today. Holy Spirit, we ask you to be with us today. With a choir, with the preaching of the word, with the musicians. Father, we give you glory. Everything that we have, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, Alan Rock. Welcome to church this morning. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, say amen. amen. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's exactly what we're going to do this morning. I have to keep remembering whether it was tonight or this morning because we did this last night. So this morning. So we're going to praise the Lord this morning. We're going to bring to you in music the greatest story that ever has been told of a historical event. And uh, we hope that you will enjoy this and, uh, and glean something out of it to uh, strengthen your spiritual walk with the Lord this morning. And uh, we have just a little glitch this morning. Um, Nick is not here. Uh, there's a death in the family, and uh, we're not quite sure what's happening. So, uh, but we're going to continue anyway. Just uh, pray for Nick uh, that everything will um, come to pass that needs to uh, in his life. So uh, without ado... We would like to present to you, Worthy is the Lamb. His resurrection on our behalf, in our place, 
Jesus walked from Jerusalem to Calvary along the Via Dolorosa. The Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. Jesus walked that road so that we would not have to. Jesus walked that road so that at the end of the road, Jesus would rise again and provide forgiveness from sin and life everlasting for you and for me and for all who believe in him. Listen to the words of this song, the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering, that Jesus chose to walk for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day, the soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating. There were stripes upon his back, and he wore a crown of thorns upon his head, and he bore with every step the scorn of those who cried out for his death. Down the Via Dolorosa, called the way of suffering, like a lamb, came the Messiah, Christ the King. But he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and me. Down the Via Dolorosa, all the way to Calvary. Por la Via Dolorosa triste, en Jerusalén los soldados le abrían paso a Jesús. Mas la gente se acercaba para ver al que llevaba aquella cruz. Por la vía dolorosa, que es la vía del dolor, como oveja vino Cristo, Rey, Señor. Y fue Él quien quiso ir por su amor, por ti y por mí. Por la vía dolorosa al Calvario y a morir. The blood that would cleanse the soul of all men made its way to the heart of Jerusalem. Down the Via Dolorosa called the way of suffering, like a lamb came the Messiah, Christ, the King, but he chose to walk that road out of his love for you and for me, down the Via Dolorosa all the way to Calvary.
just a few days before the Passover festival, in their celebration, the Jews would remember how God had used, used Moses to lead them to the promised land. They would recall how the blood of the sacrificial lamb had been instrumental in their deliverance from Egyptian bondage. Jerusalem resounded with excitement as Jesus the celebrated Messiah entered the city. Shouts of Hosanna and blessed be he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord reverberated through the streets. Many had heard about or even witnessed his miracles and the compelling message of salvation which he had preached with boldness. They proclaimed him as their king, this one sent from heaven, the holy 
lamb of God. Waving palm branches, the joyous crowd celebrated his arrival. In the days that followed his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus spent time teaching the truths of God. Though many believed, there were skeptics, particularly the religious leaders, who were deeply troubled by his teaching. They began to explore ways that they could rid themselves of this influential fraud. The day soon arrived when Jesus and his disciples were to celebrate the Passover feast, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. They gathered in an upper room, specifically prepared for the purpose. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them. This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I will not drink again until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God.
worshiping with us this morning, we invite you to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. And uh, we ask that you'd hold the bread and the cup together and we will take it together at the end.
Following the Passover meal, Jesus and his disciples sang a hymn. Then they were placed then they went to a place called Gethsemane. In anticipation of the events soon to come, he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Going a little further, he fell down with his face to the ground and in anguish prayed, Abba, Daddy! My father, if it is possible, let this cup be taken from me, but not my will, but yours be done. In the upper room, Jesus had told his disciples that they would fall away following his death. He had told them that he would soon be betrayed by one of them, their own. Even one of his most beloved followers, Peter, would deny him multiple times, and the very people he had come to save would reject it. On the darkest night, the words of the prophet Elijah, Isaiah, was fulfilled. We, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Having been betrayed by Judas, had finished praying when he was suddenly surrounded by a host of soldiers and officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. Arrested and bound, he was brought before the high priest. 
and questioned about his disciples and teachings. In a trial filled with mockery and deception, Jesus was sentenced to death by crucifixion. After placing a crown of thorns on his head and a purple robe on his shoulders, Jesus was forced to carry his own cross to a place called Golgotha. There, the Son of God was nailed to a cross and lifted up to die a criminal's death. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world.
the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb where Jesus had been buried. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, the angel told them. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. The women hurried after, away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, for Jesus was risen from the dead. Hallelujah! Glory to the risen Lamb! Amen. <laughs> resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, and where I go, and prepare a place for you. I will come again and take you to myself when I, where I am, you will be also. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we who believe shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. The dead will be raised and we shall all be changed. death, where is your victory? O oh, grave, where is your sting? Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, we who believe shall one day join the heavenly host 
in a never-ending hymn of praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. have a couple of words to say. As I said last night, you know, when a pastor says he has a short message to give, he's using God's definition of short. You know, like a thousand years is like a passing night, right? So, or a twinkling of an eye. Just kidding. When I think about some of the great words that have ever been spoken, a lot of interesting candidates come to mind for the top of the list. For example, in 1789, Benjamin Franklin said, Our new constitution is now established. Everything seems to promise that it will be durable. But in this world, he said, nothing is certain except death and taxes. This is another favorite one of mine. The famous kitchen master, Julia Child, reminds us that a party without a cake is really just a meeting. Amen? Amen. 
Can you relate to that? All right. Give me liberty or give me death. Quotation attributed to American politician and orator Patrick Henry. The speech was given at the Second Virginia Conference in March 13, 1775, and among the audience were future presidents Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. Most people recognize the famous words of Abraham Lincoln's famous night. Uh, November 19th, 1863 speech at Gettysburg. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And then he ends just as eloquently by saying that the government is of the people, for the people, and by the people, and shall not perish from the face of the earth. Or how about those wonderful words from Dr. Martin Luther King in 1963 in his I Had a Dream speech. We hold these truths to be self-evident, Dr. King said, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. In his inaugural uh, address in 1961, President John F. Kennedy said the energy, the faith, and the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. And the glow from the fire can truly light this world. And so my fellow Americans, he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And then who could forget, now I know some of you weren't alive, but who could forget July 30th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and the Apollo lunar module with Buzz Aldrin, they landed on the moon. And Armstrong stepped onto the lunar surface and said, this is one small step for mankind, one giant leap for mankind. Excuse me, one small step for man, got to get it right, and one giant leap for mankind. It was broadcast to an estimated 530 million viewers worldwide. Now, there are books full of quotations made by great men and women who have helped form and shape our society. But there are no words, none, no words more important than what I'm going to share with you at the moment. In the Bible, in Matthew chapter 26 and 27, we find the account of Jesus' death. Christ had been tried, he'd been beaten, he'd been crucified and finally laid to rest in a tomb. And this tomb, because the Romans didn't want there to be the rumors of him rising from the dead, as that being said, was blocked by this humongous rock, this big old stone. And not only that, to ensure that no hanky-panky would happen, there was Roman guards stationed every six hours in front of the rock. Pretty much the end, most everybody thought, then in chapter 28, the women arrived at the tomb early on Sunday morning expecting to prepare Jesus' body with myrrh and burial spices. But to their shock and surprise, they encountered two angels who delivered to them what I believe are the greatest words ever said. The angels said, Jesus, they're talking about Jesus, he is not here, he is risen. He is not here. He is risen. Turn to your neighbor and say that. He is not here. He is risen. Tell him. Okay. Now, I, I want you to do that again with Super Bowl force. Just like your favorite team was winning the Super Bowl, right? He is not here. He is risen. Much better, much better. Christ, the anointed one. Christ, the redeemer. Christ, the one everyone had seen die and risen from the dead was alive. And in his rising, all those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will also rise. And listen to how Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Just as the choir so beautifully sang a few minutes ago, Paul says this. He says, now I say this. Brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, you know, I said last night, I should get Jose to give us a blast on the trumpet right here. At the last trumpet, we shall rise, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, 
must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on incorruptible and the mortal has been put on immortal, then shall bring to pass this saying that is written, death is swallowed by victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks to God, who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, we be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. There is victory in Jesus. Amen? Amen. As our worship team comes, let me just leave you with this final thought. Because Christ rose from the grave, because Christ defeated death, because Christ restored the bond that Adam and Eve had broken by disobeying God, you know, in today's parlance, you might say when Adam and Eve came, they really screwed things up. They messed things up because they disobeyed God. But God knew that. Before the foundation of time, God knew that that was going to happen. And so he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whoever would, live, whoever would believe in him should have eternal life and they should not perish. Those who trust in Jesus will be resurrected to new life, a new body, no more titanium knees, no more hurt backs, no more parts that don't work anymore, no more eyes that can't see. A new body, isn't that exciting? No aches and pains, amen. A new body, and that new body, resurrected just like Jesus, will live with him in heaven forever. Amen. The greatest words ever spoken, he is not here, he is risen. Now, sadly, many people may be familiar with the words I quoted earlier about uh, JFK and uh, the moon landing and Martin Luther King, and, but they don't understand the greatest words of all time, that he is not here. He is risen. And maybe you're here today or watching on the internet and don't know Jesus. I would like to give you very quickly an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ into your life. I want you to listen to very carefully what the worship team is going to sing, and then I will come back and give you that opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Worship team. Please stand if you're able, and let's continue to worship. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you had me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I
darkness into the light this morning and you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, I invite you to do that. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and pray this prayer after me. And if you're already a believer, maybe you can pray this prayer on behalf of someone else, not that you can accept Jesus for them, but the Holy Spirit would work on their hearts to make that life-changing decision. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, amen. Be seated, please. If you're in the building this morning and you prayed that prayer, Pastor Jim and I would love to talk to you after the service. If you're watching on the internet, give us a shout out at alamrock.cc or 408-258-1237. As we continue our worship this morning, we give our gifts, honor, our gifts, offerings, and tithes to the Lord this morning. And uh, we have two weeks left on our special um, Annie Armstrong offering, which goes directly to missionaries who are working in North America. So uh, give as your heart leads. If you're visiting this morning and you're not prepared to give, that's okay too. We're just glad that you are here this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for these gifts, tithes, and offerings that are so generously and cheerfully given. We pray that you'll make us good stewards of this as we seek to build your kingdom through Alamark Christian Church. So these things we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. All right. A couple of thank yous. I'd like to thank all the guys at the sound and visual back there. Audio visual. Thank you, guys. I'd like to thank our wonderful orchestra. Yes. And they... Uh, since... since since Nick wasn't here, this is the first time we did this. And, you know, playing, going with a different director and piano player is, like, is really hard to do. And you guys did such a fantastic job, so thank you so much. Um, uh, during, during the communion, we had uh, just this gorgeous violin solo by Alson. Thank you, Alson. Thank you to our narrators. And last but not least, thank you to our choir. And thank you to you for being here this morning. We really appreciate it. out and uh, sing ourselves out. We wish you a blessed Easter. Have a great time with your families today. Um, I tried to have a choir practice today, but nobody said they would come. So there is no choir rehearsal today. Let us pray. 
Father God, we just thank you for uh, the salvation that we have through your son, Jesus Christ. We are thankful that he did rise from the dead so that we too one day may rise again. Father, we just uh, thank you for those who are visiting here this morning. Uh, may they uh, strengthen their walk with you. Father, we just pray for... Um, TJ for uh, improved health and Sister Kit and Vicki that you would just heal them, make them well. Father, we just pray that you'll keep us safe as we go and uh, we look forward to coming back next Sunday to lift praises and worship and learn about you. These things we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And all God's children said... Amen. Let's worship one more time. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Come on.
Choir and instrumentalists for a picture, please. Thank you. Picture, picture.